Hello, and welcome to episode 103 of the Once Upon a Corgi podcast. We are a crafty, puppy interrupted podcast coming to you from Southern Connecticut. I'm your human host, Gabby, and if you can hear some rattling, that is Audrey joining us with her uh, treat toy thing. Yes. <laughs> you can find me everywhere online as Gabigales and all my hand dyed yarn at Once Upon a Corgi and onceuponacorgi.com. How does your nose make such loud noises? I just want to say a giant welcome back to all returning viewers and hello and welcome to all new viewers. Thank you so much for checking us out. We have a bunch of stuff to talk about today because I have been gone for a little bit and if you can't tell my voice is like an octave and a half deeper and I think I'm getting sick which is not a great time to be sick. We're just gonna go with it. I've got basically hot water and honey in the most truthful mug this given moment. So here we go. Oh, now I have honey on my face. This is good. This is already starting off real well. Before we get into the crafting, I do have one announcement to make, and that is a trunk show that is coming up in August, August 21st through the 25th. I will be having a trunk show at Yarn Social in Kansas City, Missouri. Uh, I will not be there, but I'll be send sending the yarn off to them in early in the next uh, week or two, basically. So if you are in that area and wanna see our yarn in person, go ahead and check them out. I love the look of their store, and I am hoping one day to actually make it back out to the Midwest to visit one day. Yeah, so that is August 21st through the 25th, and I have a bunch of colors going, and I am super excited for all of it. I think that's it for the administrative stuff. I'm hoping to get a giveaway going for our three year anniversary of being full time as a dyer in August. I haven't totally figured out where I'm going to give that giveaway or host that giveaway or what have you. I have no brain cells still. It's my, I am completely just all the way through. I would keep an eye out on Instagram for that. Okay, let's get into the crafting before I lose my brain cells completely. Uh, I am wearing the uh, Mount Pleasant Top by Pippin Pin in Leading Man Fiber Arts Gothic Queen colorway. It is my favorite crop top and I definitely need to make at least one more if not two. I love this thing. We have a long list of finished objects, a very long list, and I've currently, so yeah. Let's start with the non-knitting finished objects and then move into the knitting. So our first non-knitting finished object is I have finally completed my Cloud Factory cross stitch. I hope you, this is all in screen. <laughs> I love this thing so much. Ugh. In case you are just listening and not currently watching, it is a be polite, be professional, and have a plan to kill everybody you meet. I love this thing. It took a long time to get through, but it's it was just so much fun to do, even though I did uh, I don't know if you can tell, hopefully you can't. Definitely didn't count something because it's a little bit off, but that's fine. My plan is to just get uh, Michael's frame to put this in and then hang it up in my little office space. I love it so much. And I love um, Cloud Factory has a lot of these super cute saying and floral things on their website for a really good price for being such an intricate. Um, uh, yeah, I did this on, I think 14 count black Ada and I just used DMC embroidery floss that I got at Joann's or Michael's or wherever I found it and this is what I've been doing for old lady night on Thursdays so I need to find some more I really want to get into embroidery like I just want to embroider embroider floral things tiny things so I have to um now start looking into getting those so if anyone's got a good embroidery book recommendation let me know so there we go I'm sure I will post this on Instagram once I get it framed I'm super excited that it is done. I did um, basically block it. Oh, that's a hair. Uh, after I finished it, I soaked it with a little bit of bowl wash and then kind of pressed it flat between two towels on my ironing board. I, uh, and it dried pretty straight. I did put a couple pins in the towels to kind of keep them taut so I don't have to actually iron it because this thing looked gnarly after being in the... Um, I have one of the square plastic frames. So this is finally done. I just need to frame it and hang it up and I love it. Our next not finished object is spinning. We have finished the spin for our chef's cowl, which is a pattern by Andrea Mowry and my friend Sam knit hers out of hand spun. So I had to obviously do the same thing because hers was amazing. 
is amazing. And I have finished spinning. Now you start wrestling. Lottie's trying to bite his ear, but she's too short, so she can't, like, get it. Guys. Guys. We're podcasting here. No, no, you're under the camera. Play by play. They are now, uh, just have their mouths open and are just, like, piranha clicking their teeth together. You guys. You're so weird. Are you good? Are you done? Can I record? Where was I? Okay, so I have finished two hand spun skeins. The first one is by Bitsy Knits. It is 100% merino. I got this. A, uh, I think my first New England Fiber Festival, which had to be like four, four or five years ago now. I don't even know. It is the case of the Angry Mourner, and I did a uh, chain ply, and I got about a sport to a DK weight, maybe some fingering in here, but that's, you know, that's fine. Uh, I got, what did I come up with? 163 yards. And I didn't weigh it, but it's about 100 grams. That's not right. So I think it's a little bit heavier than what the pattern calls for, but that's okay. It doesn't need to be a gigando cowl. I also finished my Into the World Queen of France, and this is also a chain ply. And this is 100% um, Cheviot. And this one I got 263 yards. Um, I believe it was a four ounces or 100 grams. I no longer have the packaging. So I am going to pair these two with my Captain Tight Pants from Into the World, which is a Polworth silk blend, and this will be my shift cowl, and I'm super excited for them. Uh, I'm going to cast it on soon. My project bag stash is over there, so I, that's why I keep looking that way. Not, ooh, God, not sure when, but definitely soon. I think I'd like it done for Rhinebeck. There's going to be a lot of like costume changes going on at Rhinebeck this year. I have too many sweaters that I want to wear. Not enough days. I think we're just gonna have Rhinebeck week, like just start on Sunday and go through like two more Sundays. So those are my non-knitting finished objects and now I have two knitting finished objects. This is what happens when you take like three weeks off of podcasting. I have finished my test knit for Sam who has Samantha Garen Designs or is Samantha Garen Designs. Uh, this is her relish shawl. It is a one skein um, asymmetrical poorly blocked. Please do not judge the shawl on my poor blocking skills. I ran out of maths. That's really what happened. <laughs> uh, where was I? Uh, it's a one skein asymmetrical shawl with one color brioche lace and a bunch of garter stitch and I love it. I used uh, my hand dyed yarn once upon a corgi in the world colorway on my penny base. And the speckles are killing me. I just cannot get over subtle speckles at this very moment in my life. Also, in case anyone was wondering, is it this one? No. Where'd you go? It's that one. It's half green, half pink. <laughs> so that's my favorite speckle of the shawl. This was a really fun knit. She does have a two skein version and I don't think it's coming out until November. I could be mistaken. I will link you to her website. <laughs> I should have asked the details before I did this. Totally forgot. So she has a two skein version as well and I really like that one and I'm hoping somebody does the two skein version where the garter is one color and the brioche is another color because I think that would look really nice. It was a super easy um, directions to follow and like it's brioche lace but it's one color so I would even say like if you're ready to like take your brioche to the next step this is a good way to start. I did have another friend of ours test knit it and she does not do brioche at all. That's like the one knitting she doesn't do and she's making it through pretty well. She's only messed up I think twice but mostly because she either dropped a yarn over or like forgot it. So this is finished object number one and I Love it so much. I'm super excited for shawl weather soon. I realize I haven't worn shawls at all, like 
since maybe May and I miss it terribly. FO number two is my second magpie tendency. Uh, I'll try and put photos up here. I did take some photos the other day in it. This is the v-neck version of the magpie tendency by Melissa who is skinanigans and I did not mean to do this. The colorway or the yarn I use for the body is magpie fibers in the Hell's Bells colorway which I got at Brooklyn General when Becky from Stringing It Together in Soprano Knits came to visit New York City for I think she had an audition. Yeah so we went to Brooklyn General and I got some magpie fibers and then accidentally made it into a magpie tendency. <laughs> I used um, my hand dyed yarn in the Nightmares Plus 10 colorway for the contrast on the ginger base. Are you knocking into the tripod? What? I really love this pattern. I did do my first one I did the smallest size so this one I went up to I think instead of doing the extra small I did the small and I added two more repeats to the body. Um, this is a merino cashmere nylon base. I believe it's Magpie Swanky Sock. I don't know where I put the tag. It's a really nice tag, so I know I have it. I just don't know where it is. Um, it's got a little bit more weight to it than the, um, the Polworth blend that I used for the first one. So it's kind of staying down more while the Polworth one kind of just like springs back up into itself, which is totally fine. So this one's a little bit drapier. It's a little bit looser on the shoulders. I did just the contrast shoulder panel. She does have one where you color block it to, I think, like where you make the V-neck and then go to the main color. But I wanted to use up as much of this yarn as I could, even though it's a very small shirt, but that's fine. I think I have enough so I could do like a pair of not shorty socks, but relatively short socks with contrasting heels, cuffs, and toes, which is like the perfect amount of leftover yarn that I like. Just enough to do like a quick sock project, but not so much that I have leftovers after the sock. Uh, yeah. Uh, I have worn this and it was great. Oh my God, what is that? <gasps> no! Oh no, there's a drop stitch. Oh, panic, panic, mayday. Okay, panic over. We're gonna have to call this one magpie panic. Panicsy. <laughs> that was bad, I'm really sorry. I'll never do it again. Oh, okay. Oh, that was traumatizing. This is weird. Whatever. So here's uh, something new. This is what I've just noticed. Uh, this stitch is loose, but it, I don't know. That, that's happening. I did stress knit this fairly quickly. It's entirely possible that it's about to unravel at any given moment. Entirely possible. I, I'm just, the only thing I can say about this pattern is I love it so much. It is perfect for putting over dresses, putting over tank tops, even just, uh, I wore this the other day with the ripple bralette underneath it and so like a high-waisted skirt. Perfect. I would make a thousand of these if I could and I probably will. I have a whole basket of scraps and I think magpies are in my future. Oh, I love it. I do want to do a three quarter sleeve one eventually. I also want to keep it with the v-neck. I really like the v-neck version. Um, I'm a huge fan of v-necks over crew necks. I don't know what these are called. So there we go. And this is, I mean, it's not really a Rhinebeck sweater, but I've dubbed Rhinebeck sweaters the red Rhinebeck because almost all the sweaters are red or have red in them. Also, I've decided that I'm now just going to make my whole wardrobe black Tones of blacks and grays and reds. I think, I think that's my new life and I'm okay with it. I really am. So those are all of my finished objects into works in progress. And these are both new cast ons. Speaking of Ryan Beck sweaters, I have cast on, I don't know if this is gonna be my Sunday or my Saturday sweater. Have not decided. And it looks great right now. You can definitely tell what it is and it's dangled. I have cast on, as of Tuesday, a very tangly, very tangly, where is this even coming from? Oh, you're, are you, what are you wrapped around the, yeah, you're wrapped around the hand. I have cast on, as you can definitely tell what it is, the Maritimo, Maritimo? Maritimo by Caitlin Hunter. I will put a picture up because this looks like nothing. <laughs> it is a, um, Kind of, I want to say kind of a boxy three-quarter sleeve top with lace de contrasting lace details along, is it three-quarter sleeve length? 
I don't even know. I'm just making up sweaters. I'm so sorry. <laughs> so it is a kind of loose, roughly boxy shaped um, short sleeve sweater with contrasting lace panels along the bottom and kind of like midsection of it. I have been eyeballing this for a while now and I haven't really had the colors scream out this is what I want to be until I went down to Maryland for a trunk show and I stayed with Meg from Bad Wolf Girl Studios and we did a little yarn trade and I got two skeins of her haggard colorway which she this is a one-of-a-kind version of it. She made it a little bit darker for me, which I love. This is a one-of-a-kind, um, I think it was originally her Galaxy and then something went weird in the dye pot, so she over-dyed it. So we have a one-of-a-kind Galaxy and a one-of-a-kind Hagrid. The Galaxy is the contrast color, so it will be the lace panels, and then Hagrid will be the body, and I love it so much. They're, um, this one is a 75-25 merino nylon, and this is a 70-20... 75-25 merino nylon uh, silver Stellina base and they're super squishy and super soft and just I love them. They're holding up really well because I've had to rip back a couple times because I started this at Knit Group which is a terrible place to count. Do not recommend. I am knitting the smallest size uh, which is the extra small and that is supposed to give you a 40 inch bust so this is going to be much larger than what I usually knit for myself. Um, I only have a 30, 31, 32 if I like wear enough bras on inch bust. So this is going to be a, a lot baggier than what I'm used to. Um, so I'm doing it on the size three, which is the recommended needle size. My gauge tends to be a little bit tighter. So it's probably going to end up being like, I don't know, it's going to be a little bit smaller than um, the finished sizes that she gives, which is totally fine. I am perpetually terrified that I have twisted my stitches somehow. So if I keep looking down, it's because I'm convinced that I did. <sighs> Sorry, I can't do math at this moment. It's going to be a little bit smaller than what the pattern calls for, which is totally fine. I don't like things being super baggy on me. Um, and if I do, I don't like them being that long because I don't really have a waist on my own. I have to sort of define it more, which is, that's the way I am. And I'm okay with that. I've kind of uh, gotten really good at the style of like pencil skirts and more slim fitting on the bottom and then sort of the looser thing on top which is I think it's just a super easy like style to go with. I don't know where I'm going with this. I'm so sorry. It calls for three colors. My contrast color number two is more of the Nightmares Plus 10 on my ginger base because I didn't realize I needed two colors. Um, contrast color one, which is the lace, is going to be that galaxy colorway, and then Hagrid will be the main body. Yeah, I haven't looked at the weather yet for Rhinebeck, so I don't know what day this is going to be. I am also planning a long sleeve sweater out of some Green Mountain Spinnery, and a short sleeve pullover, which I'm going to talk about in a minute. So it's Rhinebeck. As we all know, it could either be 80 degrees or snowing. We'll see what happens when October gets here. My plan is to just have a plethora of sweaters to choose from. So I'm keeping this guy in my, it's definitely, I need to get it in a bigger bag, but this is my Eldenwood craft bag. It's just what I had on top of my bag pile. And yeah, I am hoping to get to the body portion of this fairly quickly, probably before September. We will see what happens with uh, the August schedule. Things should calm down after next weekend, hopefully. Our newest cast on is living in my brandy new Faces of the Moon Mataru bag, which is my pride and joy. I don't even, when I'm not knitting with it, I just carry this bag around the house with me, which is a whole three rooms if you include the bathroom, but I love it so much. And this is a test knit I am doing for Melissa from Skinanigans. She designed this sweater using my hand dyed yarns and I'm so excited for it. It is a Violet Baudelaire inspired crop top so it is going to be a short sleeve pullover with a detachable uh peter pan collar and i think she's using a ribbon to attach her peter pan collar like the ribbon from that violet uses i love it so much so we have decided to use the till death collection for this so she knit hers out of ravishing as the main body and earl gray as a collar i am going to be knitting mine out of hearth as the main body and here I am I'm about I'm almost done with the sleeve increases which I'm super excited for 
and I am using Ravishing as my collar. I'm so excited. Oh, I'm so excited. It's definitely 100% my style of a pullover, a Peter Pan collar, and a crop top. It's just all three things that I love all rolled into one. So she has a bunch of testers out there and uh, Lava Girl Knits. I am blinking on her name, I'm so sorry. I'll put her Instagram handle down here. She is test knitting it in the Justice colorway with Ravishing as the collar. And that colorway is just blow. It's killing me, it's killing me. Her sweater is going to be amazing. I am all, oh God, I'm stuck, sorry. I cast this on, on Monday, I believe, maybe Sunday. I don't really remember. I am alternating skeins, so I have two skeins and I'm doing the helical knitting for it and it's blending really well. I would not have guessed that this is two skeins, which is super nice because I had to dye them at two different times. And I love this colorway. It's just such deep browns and neutrals and then little pops of purples and blues. And this is inspired by the venue that we are getting married at. And it will complete, oh, this is backwards, sorry. It will complete the Till Death sweater collection. So we will have a sweater in the Earl Grey as the body, which was my Novelli, Ravishing as the body, which is my Soldatna, and then this, which I think is just called Violet Baudelaire. I could be mistaken, in Hearth. Oh man, should I knit a third in Hearth in a Caitlin Hunter pattern? So then I have three Caitlin Hunter Till Death. That's a thought, I might do that. Not much else to say, um, I'm using US six four millimeter needle to knit this. I did do a gauge swatch and I was right on point with the six. So we went with that. And it's been a really nice, fairly mindless TV knitting while catching up on Harlots. Did I say? It's on my Isaac base, which is 100% Superwash Polworth, which I am just, I'm in love with the Polworth right now. And oh, it's so good. It's such a good sweater yarn. If I do say so myself. And that is what I've been working on. Um, I have a couple other things going on, but I can't really talk about them yet. So those will be at a later date. Um, I do have one thing that I have not started, but I have the fabric pulled out for, which is this like silvery blue satin mystery fabric. I probably got it at Affordable Fabrics. I am going to be making a, I'm hoping, um, spaghetti strap wrap dress with this, maybe just a wrap dress with it for the Jim and Pam next week. I mean, it's been super hot the past couple of weeks and weekends, so I thought this would be a really nice, uh, cool dress to wear during that. It will be air conditioned, but still, those rooms get really hot. Uh, I don't have a pattern yet. I'm still kind of perusing to see what is there. I'm basically left with online only patterns at this point, unless I can get them at Joanne Fabrics because I have a week exactly to do this. <laughs> I'm not sure when I'm gonna do it. I might Monday, I don't know, we'll see. But that is what I want to do. I tried finishing my pencil skirt or my my tulip skirt out of the black fabric, but I've lost my invisible zipper. So I have to go to Joann's and get another one. Otherwise I would be done. I also have to go to Joann's and get thread for my Ogden cami. Otherwise that would be done. I just have to go to Joann's. That's really it. <laughs> so those are all of my crafting things. I did complete all of my crafting goals. I finished my singles, I finished the cross stitch, I sort of went through my fabric stash, but not really. Uh, so my crafting goals, that's still there. And so for next week, I'm hoping to have sewn that dress, go through my fabric stash, and start spinning my Illyrian wings fiber. I love it. This is from uh, Classy Squid Fiber Co. And this is her A Court of Thorns and Roses Illyrian Wing bat. And I'm hoping to get these two spun up. I have two of them because what is self-control, honestly. I wanna get these spun up to know how much I have if in case I need somebody to get more for me at Needles Up so I have enough to do a sweater because I need a sweater out of this. Oh, it's so, I don't, uh, I might just need to buy a bat and just snuggle it forever. <laughs> oh, I love it. So those are my crafting goals. I'm hoping to at least get this started. The nano eels are starting to ship. I haven't gotten the notification yet, but I'm hoping I do soon. <laughs> I'm very excited for those. 
Okay, the rest of this is shop update and beyond crafting. So if you are not here for any of those, thank you so much for watching. And if you are, let us continue on. And I forgot one thing for the shop update. So we will be having a shop update today, August 2nd at 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time at onceuponacorgi.com. And I hope you all can make it. We are having a themed update this week because I have, once again, no self-control and have allowed Sarah J Moss to enter every bit of my life. I can't stop. Her writing is so good. Before we get into that, I do have some mini skeins of the Till Death collection going up in the shop. And we have four new colorways going up, which are all inspired by the Throne of Glass series by Sarah J Moss. I'm not ashamed of how much I love this. I have dyed two pairings of two relationships in this book. I'm not gonna say the character names in case you haven't read them and you really want to and you don't want to get spoiled, but I love them. And now when you read them and you get to that point, you too will just sit there and scream as I have because I now just read fan theories of these books. So I've been completely spoiled, but I'm okay with it. So our first pairing up is Fireheart. And we are going to have all of these on Marie Cutie, Ginger, and Tesla. Fireheart which is this super warm burgundy brown deep red with embery bits of yellow and gold but then little little hints of greens and blues and and this pairing goes with buzzard which is the much cooler greens with speckles of blues and different shades of browns So this is Fireheart and Buzzard. Pairing number two, we have Hello Witchling, which is just deep blacks and uh, grays with different shades of reds and burgundies and a little hint of gold speckles in there. And then this pairs with Hello Princeling, which is different shades of blues, hints of purples, some deep blacks, some light, light silvery ice blues so they go together so we have hello princeling and hello witchling i love them so much <laughs> so these will be going up in the shop today along with a couple other miscellaneous skeins of things that i found that aren't in the shop while doing inventory this week i love this so much i just cannot contain my poor little heart with these colors uh, just uh so good <laughs> i love it was so much fun to play around with them um I th it started with hello princeling and it turned hello princeling started off as just like a test die with a bunch of new blue dyes i had in and then i was like oh wait this kind of reminds me of this character so then i dyed all of them and uh, i just love them so much i definitely want a sweater out of fireheart i definitely want a sweater out of Hello Witchling. I need like six things out of these guys. I just, oh, I love them. I love them so much. So those are going up into the shop tonight at 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. I hope you can make it. I hope you are as excited about these as I am. If not, I will just knit myself a bodysuit out of all of them. I think that's a good backup plan and I'm going to stick to it. And what is already up in the shop is the last chance to order the advent calendars, an advent of woolen minis or a novella of woolen minis. Uh, which are our yarn advent calendars. Advent, you get 24 minis and a skein. Novella, you get 12 minis and a skein. And those are up on the website as well. Those are coming down August. They're coming down August 9th. I think that's what I have in my schedule. Um, so I can start dyeing those immediately and try and get them ready to either be shipped out before Rhinebeck or immediately after Rhinebeck. We'll see how my schedule goes. If you would like information about the shop update, you can always sign up for the newsletter. It goes out every Thursday night with information of what's going into the shop and what is being knit on our yarn. And you can sign up for that if you just scroll all the way to the bottom of the homepage on our website, onceuponacorgi.com. Into Beyond Crafting, which is everything we've been up to that's not crafting. And that has been reading. Surprise! Since I last talked to you, I have finished Sarah J Moss's Queen of Shadows, Empire Storms, and Assassin's Blade. So I am now waiting on Tower of Dawn from the library. I'm number five out of two on the list. 
and Kingdom of Ash from the library. I'm number 17 out of two on the list. So in order, I have read book one through five, and then Assassin's Blade is a prequel of sorts. One, two, three. Three or four novellas about Selena before Throne of Glass. So it's kind of like you hear about all these things that she's done, and like all these adventures she goes on, but you don't get the whole details. But then she wrote Assassin's Blade and that gives you all the details. It made Empire Storms hurt that much more. It actually made the whole book series hurt so much more but it was really good. You don't have to read that one before you read everything else. I think it's a lot better to read the whole series and then go back and do Assassin's Blade. Just the level of detail and foreshadowing that she puts into everything is amazing. I just cannot fathom how her brain connects it all. Just, it's too good. It's too good. So I've read those. I am currently working on Severbrani's Arinthian line. I'm in the final book of that line, which is Legend. We are almost at the end, so now I am caught up to the first book I read, which I might reread, because that was a good book. I just wish that there was more about this war they were talking about, and now I'm in that war. I might go back and reread that, because I think that's a trilogy after the Arinthian line. I don't have anything lined up book-wise after. I'll probably just start rereading and re-listening to A Court of Thorns and Roses while I die the advent calendar, which I'm super excited about. What pumpkin? You're fine. Give me like five more minutes and we'll go outside. I do have a pile of books I want to get through from Christmas, which are also sort of magical fantasy. I'm just real into the fantasy right now. I'm okay with that. And other than that, it's been a lot of planning stuff. We've just been really getting ready for the Jack and Jill slash Jim and Pam next Friday, which is coming up quick. We have to do all the last minute shopping stuff this weekend. And I'm kind of excited for it. I'm not big on attention on me as I sit here and talk to a camera by myself and put it on the internet. So it's a little bit weird, but I'm excited. It's all the office themed. We have the office games set up. We have the office drinks ready to go. And we're going to try to do a bunch of the office raffle prizes. I'm so excited. <laughs> I'm just so excited for all the office things. To be happening. We're not dressing up as the office character because that's basically just the way Jake dresses every day. And that's not very comfortable for him. I'm just so, I'm just so excited to laugh at all of the signs that I've made for myself, to myself. And if that's not what the office is about, then I don't know what it is. But yeah, it's been a lot of that, a lot of wedding stuff because now we kind of had to like, we're not totally sure what's going to be happening in the next couple of months. Um, I don't want to say life-wise because that sounds worse than it is. Planning wise, considering new job perspectives, there may be some opportunities coming up where we might have to move either quite suddenly. I won't be going anywhere until at least after New England Fiber Festival, but we are now trying to get everything that should be done or what we should be doing during September and October finished before September. That way if plans change and we do have to move quite suddenly, we don't have to worry about anything and it's already done. I hope that makes sense. I'm not trying to be cryptic. I just don't want to like, don't know what's happening yet. Uh, and we're really buckling down with wedding planning stuff. We are close to the 200 day mark. So a lot of the smaller detail gathering things has to happen now. We did, we did the dinner tasting last week, which was a lot of fun and really productive. So dinner's all set. That's fine. I think our biggest thing now is invitations and we have to start testing for desserts because we're baking all of our desserts because we're not doing a cake because mom said it's not a wedding unless it's got a cake. So then I said, there's no cake now. Now we have no cake. <laughs> and so this whole thing is gone. <laughs> I made a post a couple weeks ago, I think. I don't remember the timeline. I have zero brain cells, as you can tell by this whole thing, uh, stating that we were gonna take a couple weeks off. We took a week off of work to uh, kind of just be with family and deal with some family things. I'm glad I wanted a podcast this week because I know I won't be there next week because of the Jim and Pam, but I just wanted to let everybody know that we're all okay. We're family's fine. My grandmother ended up passing away on last Monday. She was 90 years old. Um, it's been a steady decline in health over the past like 25 years. Like every year one thing would happen. And I feel a little weird like saying this on the podcast, but I just wanted to like let you guys know. I just want to say thank you to everybody who reached out. We are all okay. 
we're fine. It's just been a rough month. And I'm glad we are now in August and I'm looking forward to the fall. So with that, before these dogs get too riled up again, I'm going to let you go. Thank you so much for watching and supporting the shop, supporting the podcast, and we will see you in two weeks, not next week, two weeks. Thank you so much for watching.